Good morning, Village Church. I love you all. I miss you all. We say that every week because we mean it. I look forward to being able to be with you and see you all again soon. There's a there's a verse, uh, Psalm 34, 8, that says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Another version says, Blessed are you who run to him. Well, this is a time when people have been running to the Lord. They've run to other things in the past, and maybe you still run to some things that aren't good for you. Jesus is always good for you. He takes our brokenness, he takes our hurts, our pains, our fear, all of it, he takes it. And he took it on the cross. So we don't have to walk with those things anymore. He died for all of our healing. He died for our restoration. He died for our eternal salvation. He's amazing. He continues to be amazing. Let's run to him today.
Hello, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining me and Miss Esther today. Miss Sonia, what do we have here? I'm so happy you asked. I'm sure you at home are wondering, what is all this stuff here? Well, for today's Bible story, we're going to learn about a woman and two boys who were very poor. And when um, her and her son had a need for money, God showed her a way to earn money to meet that need. But for now, first, we're going to play this game. And boys and girls, maybe you can help Miss Esther at home. So we have a bag, a ball, a brush, an apple, a baby bottle, and a toy boat. So I'm going to tell Miss Esther a need that I have, and we'll see if she can figure out what to give me to solve that problem. Nice. Okay, so we'll play. First, we're going to have a few seconds so you can think about all these things. What could we possibly use them for? There we go. You ready, Miss Esther? I'm ready. Okay. Oh, you know what? My tummy is rumbling. I'm hungry. Hmm. What do you think? An apple. Oh, I would love an apple. That's perfect. Just what I need. And you know what? I have to go to work after this, so I have to fix my hair. Hmm. Could it be a hair brush? <laughs> yes, yeah. that'd be perfect. I can use a brush to brush my hair. That totally, totally meets the need that I have. And you know what? I think, yes, I hear a baby crying. Hmm. What do you guys think? A baby <laughs> bottle. Perfect, a baby bottle, yes. And you know what? This is gonna sound so strange, but I am stranded in the middle of an island, surrounded by the ocean, and I hmm. need to get home. What can I use? A boat? Yes. Yeah. Do you think I'd fit in the boat? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Yes. Okay. You know, I'm so lonely. I wish somebody would go outside and play with me. That would be a ball. Yes, okay. a ball. Now I have all this stuff. I need a bag to place it all in. What do you guys think? <laughs> There's a yes. bag. Perfect, Miss Esther. You are just the greatest friend ever. Thank you so much for playing that game with me. Did that, you have fun? That was so much fun. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, you know, you are a great friend, but do you know who our very best friend is? Yes, I do. God. God is our best friend. Yes, God is our best friend. You know, it was fun playing that game with pretend needs, but you know, God will help us with real needs that we have. Remember how I said I was going to tell you about a Bible story with a woman and her two sons? Yeah. Yes. Will you tell us more about it? Yes, I will. So the Bible tells us that there was a woman who was a widow. That means that her husband had died and was in heaven. So she had two sons and they were very poor and they owed a lot of money to creditors. That's mm -hmm. people who were getting, who were waiting to get paid. So she owed a lot of money. And the creditors were threatening to take her sons away to be slaves. Now, I know that sounds strange for us today, but in Bible times, when you owed people money and you couldn't pay them back, they would um, take your family members and have them work until the money was paid off. The woman must have been very afraid. I'm sure she thought she'd never pay it off and didn't want her sons to be slaves. Right. I think you're right, too. So she was very afraid. So what she did is she went to one of God's very special helpers, a prophet named Elisha. Yes. So she told Elisha her needs, what was going on. And she reminded Elisha that her husband had a man, was a man who loved God very much. So Elisha said that, of course, he would help her. So he went to her house and looked around and was trying to see if there's anything that she had that maybe she could sell and then make money and then use that money to pay off the people who she owed. Hmm. Yes. So when Elisha looked around, he saw that she had a jar with a little, a little bit of oil in it. Right. Oil. I know during Bible times, oil was super, super special. Yes. So it was very special. So they had oil that was perfumed. I mean, it, it smelled good. Kind of like this oil that we're familiar with today, right? 
baby oil. And they would take this oil and they would put it on their skins because they lived in the desert and it used to get obviously, or it gets very hot in the desert. So they would put the oil on their skin to protect their skin because they lived in the desert heat. Hey, we live in the desert. <laughs> we do live in the desert. So we know how dry our skin could get when it gets super hot outside. So, and then people also used oil in Bible times to light up their homes. They would have lamps that they would pour the oil in and then it would light up their home. So uh, the people needed oil to protect their skins and to light their homes at night. Yes, yes. And they also used oil, like we're familiar with this oil, olive oil. They would use oil also in their food or with their food. Sometimes they would season the oil and use it much like we use butter today. Wow, sounds like oil was very, very valuable. It was. Oil was very, very special. Miss Esther, have you ever had a cut? And you had somebody put ointment like this on your cut before they put a Band-Aid on. Yes, I have. So the cut wouldn't get infected and it helps it uh, heal faster. Right. So in Bible times, they didn't have the medicine that we have today. So they would use oil made into ointment to put on them to help them heal. I guess if the woman only had a little bit of oil, she was saving it in case she needed it for medicine or for their skin or even for cooking. Right, yes. Yeah. So she knew that oil was very special during that time. So I'm sure she wanted to save that little bit of oil that she had for her sons in case they needed it. So what did Elisha do for her? So what Elisha did is she asked her sons to go out to the neighborhood, out to the area, and collect as many jars as they could. So then they did. So when the boys came back with all these jars, Elisha told the woman to take that little bit of oil that she had and to start filling up the jars. So that's what she did. Mm -hmm. So she started filling up a jar and then another and then another and then another until all the jars were filled up with oil. Wow, what a miracle. Definitely a miracle. Yes. So then Elisha told her, take this oil, go out and sell it. And the money that you make from this oil, you can then um, pay off the people that you owe money to. And then you can keep the rest of the money to live off, live on. Right. So so God met the, this widow's needs very much. Right. So what a miraculous thing that happened. You know, Psalm 37, 25 says, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. God cares for people in need and he wants us to care for them, too. God wants us to love them as he does, and he wants us to remember that we can help all those people in need. Yes, God tells us that we can help others. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 40, 31, that people who hope in the Lord will be given strength. Whatever our needs are, God will give us the strength to make it through when we trust in him. Miss mm -hmm. Esther, would you pray for us? God, we thank you today because we care for the people in need. We also thank you for caring for us, each of us, each of our needs. Lord, we need you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You've brought me here to rest And given me space to breathe So I'll stay still until 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. We are so excited to uh, just receive what God has in store for us today. You know, we've been doing this a little bit lately, but we wanted to start today off just by praying and just asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and giving him the opportunity, mm -hmm. right? To and just telling him we're here and we're listening, Holy Spirit. So let's just, just just take a couple moments right now and just uh, and just pray. Uh, Holy Spirit, we are here. We are ready to listen. We are ready to receive. And uh, we're ready to obey mm. what you're asking of us today. And so thank you that you are speaking and that you will speak mightily through this uh, through this beautiful passage today. We love you uh, in your name. We pray. And let's just take a couple moments and just listen. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit has amazing things in store for us. And so, and so today we're going to be going through Matthew 16, 21 through 28. And so, uh, yeah, Ashley... Tell us yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know that it's important that you read the passage. So mm -hmm. if you're with us live, use the Bible feature yep. to look it up and kind of go along with us. And if you're just watching on YouTube or in some other format, just pause this and go and look up Matthew 16 verses 21 through 28. Yeah. So you'll remember last week that, that Jesus was standing in front of the gates of Hades in Caesarea Philippi and uh, gave Peter this incredible commission. Yeah. You know, you are Peter and on this rock, yeah. I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. And then it has this interesting language this week where it says, from that time on, Jesus began uh, to talk about how he was actually going to suffer yeah. and be killed at the hands of the Jewish leaders at that time. Yeah. And that is important language that it says from that time on, because that tells us there's a shift that is happening. There's actually a geographical shift that happens that a lot of Jesus ministry was happening in the northern part of this region. And the rest of the book of Matthew, you're going to see him largely in the southern part. But there's also a spiritual shift mm happening too. And um, Jesus began to talk more about his death and prepare for the cross here. Yeah, which was a radical thing for the disciples to hear, mm -hmm. right? Because Jesus had just revealed himself as Messiah through this beautiful encounter again with Peter, right? Mm -hmm. But this, uh, this understanding of Messiah was an understanding that uh, this was a conqueror, this was going to mm, be like this, this victorious yeah. warrior coming in with a sword drawn on a horse to like mm. vanquish all of Israel's enemies, right? And so, and so for Jesus the Messiah to be telling them now, right after revealing himself as the Messiah to them, hey, I'm now going to go die. Can I'm you imagine? Not, yeah. Yeah. That was just such a it didn't make any sense. It didn't compute with their understanding. And so, and so Peter rebukes. Jesus and says like, no, no, that, that could never happen. Jesus, you know, that could never happen. And that's not, you know, that's not Peter being ridiculous or anything. That's just him with that cultural understanding of who Messiah was. Right. And so there's this major shift for them and for us to really understand Jesus role as Messiah yeah. and what he was trying to usher in, right? So we have this rebuke from Peter, and really that's a rebuke that uh, that we're going to unpack of how yeah. we need to work through that as well. Right, right. Now Jesus uh, goes from saying, Peter, you're the rock on which the church is yeah. going to be built to uh, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. So there's that, you know, like this, this crazy, like, response to yeah. his rebuke. Um, and then we see that Jesus goes into this this uh, almost monologue, letting the disciples know how to be true disciples. And it actually says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, yeah. dot, dot, dot. And it's interesting, you would be thinking, well, aren't I already your disciple? You know, I'm following you around. But Jesus said this, I wanna actually read you his words. Mm -hmm. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for mm -hmm. me will find it. And so there's this kind of black and white understanding here of what Jesus said. This is what a disciple does, right? They deny themselves, they take up their cross, and they follow me. And we're going to unpack that more yeah. today. Super easy stuff though, Yeah, right? yeah. Super simple, easy thing, right? But 
you know, it's Welcome just, to church. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's it's amazing how Jesus is so gentle again. We want to just draw attention to that too yeah. with the disciples. He doesn't he, he didn't should. start with that message, right? He didn't call them out of the fishing boats and then say, okay, you're going to have to take up your cross and you're going to have to, die. you're going to have to die to yourself yeah. every day. No, he was so gentle. Mm. And, uh, and that's a good reminder for us as well. You know, we hear these passages and if we were just looking at it like where we are today yeah. you know there's levels of dying to yourself mm-hmm. and a lot of times we die to ourselves at the level that the holy spirit is asking us to mm. right because we don't even it's know gracious. how to d- die to ourselves yeah. in a which lot we of will ways, discover right? here in a minute absolutely yeah. we're going to unpack that but it's just important that this is a this is a journey this mm-hmm. is a journey for all of us and it was a journey for the disciples as well right so we want to ask this question what does this all mean for us right what does this really powerful central piece of of Jesus' teaching on what it means to be a follower of here is what does this mean for us today? Mm. Well, we want to just unpack quickly that this means that our good intentions, first and we want to just talk about our good intentions can actually oppose God's plan. And we see this happening with Peter, right? So again, Jesus reveals this truth about who he is as Messiah, that he came actually as a sacrificial lamb, uh, atoning sacrifice Mm -hmm. for sins, not to conquer, not to conquer physical enemies, but to conquer our hearts, to conquer the spiritual realm, which was Mm -hmm. much more important, right? And so this is the purpose that Jesus came to do as Messiah. But uh, Peter's misunderstanding in this caused him to, to be opposed in that moment and to say, no, Jesus, that could never happen. You're Jesus, that's not who you are. Yeah. Right? That's not what God's saying to you, right? And so Jesus has this, you know, it seems like such a harsh rebuke of calling him Satan, right? Yeah. But really, uh, you know, Satan is actually um, translated as really just one opposed. Yeah. Or even Adversary. as, as yeah. Jesus says, a stumbling block. An adversary, one opposed, uh, many different translations for that. Mm. But we think of like Satan, like, you know, horned in a pitchfork, you know, like, and so Jesus isn't calling him that. He's calling him, you know, one opposed. Why are you opposing who I am? You're opposing right now in this moment. Mm. You're calling me a follower of mine and you're supposed to be following me and not telling me what to do for one, right? But you're also like trying to tell me that my the plan that God has for my life is is different. You're trying to make it softer. You're trying to like cover yeah. that up and say, no, God would never ask you to do right. that, right? And so what's so important for that is that, man, we do that. Yeah. We can judge Peter so much, but yeah. we do that. Absolutely. Yeah. We do that in our own lives. Mm-hmm. You know, we do that for ourselves and we say like, well, you know, that couldn't possibly mean that or God wouldn't want me to give those mm. things up. I, those, those give me joy and happiness. Yeah. So like, why would God want me to give up things that make me happy? Right? Like mm-hmm. we or do things that. things that would cause me to, to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a wide range of what all this means. Right. Mm. And, um, and so this is so important, you know, and it's, it's interesting too, of course, that Jesus calls Peter a stumbling block right after he calls him the rock, right? Mm. So it's like your your purpose is being misused here, Peter, Yeah. right? The purpose that you just stepped into, your new identity, you're now misusing it. And it's now creating a stumbling block in, in the Messiah's plan. Yeah. Like, whoo, boy, that, right. is a, that is a strong, strong word for us today, you know? It's very easy, you know, when we see a friend especially when it's in other people's lives, it seems it's a little easier, right? But we see a friend, they come to us and they say something like, man, this season's just been so hard and I just, you know, I I, I, I feel like maybe I should be doing this. Mm. Maybe, maybe God's asking me to give this thing up, but it's so hard. And then we say, well, it's okay. Yeah. You know, God, God loves you and he you're going to get, you're going to yeah. get through this. And he's, he's, no matter what you choose, he's with you. You know, it's just like this, like, instead of like, knock it off. Exactly. Yeah. And that's who we need to be. And that's why mm-hmm. God's placed us in those positions. You know, we can either be a foundational rock for that person and their understanding of what God's asking them to do, or we can be a stumbling mm. block. And, and sometimes that stumbling block looks like caring. Yeah. looks like saying, I love you or something like that. And man, that can be a stumbling. That's what Peter was doing. Peter was just concerned for Jesus' safety and health. Yeah. He was just, no, Jesus, that would never happen to you. Right? But man, like, mm. that's not what he was called to, is it? 
And so, man, that is such an important word for us today, I think, uh, in our friendships and our personal lives, just that we are so careful that we are listening to the Holy Spirit and we're not trying to translate what the Holy mm. Spirit says through this lens of softening it just so, so it softens the blow somehow. So it's a little easier to, easier to take, you know. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a really important, yeah. I think, piece of this uh, today. Well, and I'm, I'm intrigued that it was seemingly a similar moment where Jesus gives Peter this incredible commissioning oh, yeah. as the rock. And then right after back that, to back. Yeah. back to back. And it's like, as soon as Peter owned that purpose, he misused yeah. it, yeah. you know, and, and we can find ourselves there and, and praise God. And we know from the rest of the story that Jesus didn't give up on Peter. Mm. Uh, Peter didn't like lose his standing now as the foundation yeah. on which the church was going to be unleashed. Right. Um, he still had that. God was still gracious so, yeah. to use him. And so we can be encouraged in that. But, but what's really neat is that right after that, Jesus begins to go into talking about what it looks like to be a disciple. And um, what I think he's giving is a recipe or a solution to uh, protecting um, ourselves from becoming an opposer. Mm-hmm. That, that if you do these things, uh, you will not be a stumbling block. You are a stumbling block right now, but this is what it really looks like to follow me. And, and those mm-hmm. things um, are super easy to do, yeah. uh, which is uh, to die. <laughs> This whole passage is about death, Jesus' death and the death of disciples, the self-denial and the self-death that it takes to follow Jesus. And and I, I wager that even saying the words, you know, you have to die to yourself and our self-denial um, in our Western culture and context is pretty offensive and um, like jarring to who we are, to our mindset, to what we've been fed uh, by our culture. Yeah. Our culture promotes self. In fact, it's very much follow your heart and you be true to you and you whatever truth you have, you just be true to that truth. Uh, there's not any one truth. It's whatever works for yeah. you. And as long as you work hard, you can and, achieve and all your hard. dreams on your own. You know? And work hard. Yeah. And what matters is that you're happy, yeah. you know, and the American dream and all these things wrapped up in um, the complete opposite of Jesus' message right now, which is uh, take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. And we just cannot get around the black and white nature of this statement. You know, he says, whoever loses their life, whoever dies, will find their life. And whoever wants to save their life and and keep it will actually lose it. And that is black and white. And, um, you know, I was talking to Cody right before this, thinking that uh, brilliant teaching of Jesus forces us um, as his followers, as his disciples, to to ask the question, um, how dead am I? How dead am I? Because it is so black and white, but I would wager that as a human being, uh, most of us, you know, we might start the day uh, in self-denial. Yes, Lord, whatever you want for my life. And then begin to take the reins back even by the evening, even like Peter, even by the next moment, Absolutely, you know? Um, And so this is something that we have to wrestle with, that we have to be dead to ourselves. First, we have to recognize that this is completely different than the world has taught us. So it's, it's a struggle even because we've been taught a certain way. But there's also something deep in our human nature that doesn't like to let go, that wants to self-preserve and wants to, you know, make sure that I'm protected and I'm good and I'm cared for. And Jesus is actually saying it's exactly the opposite. And I, I want to point out, uh, too, that he doesn't just say, you know, die and it's awful. He says, when you die to yourself, when you practice this self-denial, this denial of the flesh, your fleshy desires, and you yield that, you surrender that to me, um, that you will actually find your life. So there's freedom in it. There's freedom in it. And this is not just some, like, uh, command that Jesus is giving. It's more like a statement about this is how it is. This is actually how life is, that when you let go of that control, that you actually have freedom, that you actually find life. Praise God. Absolutely. He's so good. Yeah, it's such a, I mean, it's always such a powerful world, right? And we, it is. We, we just need to be reminded of it, though. It's so convicting. Often. It's it, good. It and, I, and I hope that when you're watching this and listening, that there is a level of conviction. There was, there is for me even right now of yeah. like, gosh, how dead am I? Am I dead dead? You know, yeah. am I, have I really laid my life down? Yeah. And you know, um, you know, in this passage, you know, we're, we're kind of, uh, in the middle of, of 
Jesus's time with the disciples, mm-hmm. you know? And so we've already seen, just as a quick recap, we've already seen Jesus call the disciples. They've already seen the miracles and mm-hmm. they've, they've, they've left everything to follow him. And he's even sent them out in Matthew 10 in this incredible thing where they're first mm-hmm. called apostles and he gives them, you know, power to like authority. see an mm-hmm. authority to, to see people raised from the dead and, and healings to occur, you know? And so the, the disciples have already been given all these things. They've been given these incredible titles and they've been entrusted with, yeah. with seeing the kingdom move forward. But I think in this moment, it's not so much like an initial teaching. It's like a, it's a important vital reminder mm. that Jesus mm-hmm. is making sure this is always what will bring you back to the path that the new kingdom is asking you to go. Oh, on. that's good. Always, right? Mm-hmm. We're called. Jesus believed in them wholeheartedly. Jesus knew that, you know, like, I know you're going to do this and, and you have it in you and, and I'm calling you to see the new things happen mm-hmm. right in front of your faces and miracles occur. But this is a message that's so vital that comes up in our lives in the middle of what we're doing to remember, hey, if, you, if you're starting to stray, if you're starting to interpret things a different way, if you're trying to soften the message of the kingdom for whatever other purposes, hey, make sure you're not a stumbling block and die to yourself again and mm-hmm. again and again and again. Always the answer. Always Mm -hmm. that, right? And that's going to keep you on that path. And you know what's so amazing is Jesus had to learn that himself. Mm. You know, his calling in the wilderness. You know, when he when he went through that that fasting, that's 40 days and the 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 enemies tempting him during that time, and and he really had to learn, you know, to to fully die to the temptations of things like safety in his life, things like significance, Mm. things like satisfaction right that are so tempting right he had to he had to push all those things out so that he could stay on the path and he was regularly tempted by those things and he was tempted even up to the cross and so here we see Jesus revealing for the first time that he's going to die he's revealing for the first time that he has to really give up mm. safety <laughs> any any significance mm-hmm. because everybody left him Hmm. Right. It's, it's interesting. You know, yeah. he says, you know, take up your cross and follow me. Right. But none of the disciples were there when Jesus took up his cross they and he had to, to walk that road. Else. They had yeah. to find a stranger to come take it for him. All of the disciples had fled him. In fact, like if you look at it, the only person that was really still with him was his mom. His mom. At the end, everybody else had abandoned him. So Jesus had to completely give up any significance, any platform mm. in his life Influence. to be able to get to that mm-hmm. point because he was abandoned. He was abandoned even by his, even by his father, right? Like God forsook him too in that moment, right? Because of the sin that he had to take Mm. on in that moment. And so he had to, he had to surrender those things. He had to surrender satisfaction in his life. He had to surrender worldly comforts. He had to surrender the things like having a family of your own and like all those things, right? And so, and so Jesus had to give these things up himself. And so he's calling the disciples in this moment that, that they're going to have to do that as well. Mm. If you want to call yourself my disciple, you have to do the same thing. And Jesus led by example always. And so today, mm-hmm. right, as we're hearing this message of dying to ourselves, if we were to ask through the lens of, of maybe what things in your life are you choosing to be safe about? Where are you choosing safety, right, about the call that God has in your life? Are you, are you afraid Maybe you're afraid to do something for your own safety, right? Maybe you're afraid to do something because, uh, because of significance, right? Maybe you, maybe you're moving forward and you have this wrong lens of wanting to have people see you do it, mm. right? And, and have accolades and you want to, and you want to be the best at this and you want people to, to raise you to a platform and look at you so you can say, Hey, look at all I'm doing for God. Look at how awesome I am. Mm. Look at all the people that are following me and saying, Hey, great job. I learned so much from you and you changed my life. Mm. All those, all those accolades that we search for significance that are just empty. They're just mm-hmm. empty at the end of the day. You lose your life. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to lose all those things. And, and, and of course, satisfaction as well, right? Like all the things that God may, may call us to, 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 to give up yeah. that are comforts, those, those worldly comforts in our lives. You know, are you willing to, to make big moves for God? Are you willing to sell all of all that you, that you own, mm. right? Are you willing to, to take all that and to give it towards a, a ministry or to start a new ministry or, or whatever God's calling you to, right? But those are, those are such yeah. significant barriers for us that God's calling us to. So would you just take a moment and just see Holy Spirit, right? Is there anything in us? Is there anything in us right now 
that's holding us back. That's holding us back from the path that you've called us onto. Mm -hmm. What areas do we need to die to ourselves more in today? Is it safety? Is it significance? Is it satisfaction? Father, what areas are we, are we afraid? What areas are we still trying to control in our lives? Mm. Would you just take a moment? I know that the Holy Spirit's moving right now. Would you just take a moment and just listen and just take a moment to, to surrender those things on your own? Just even speak it out if you need to or write it down or, or whatever you need to. But just take a moment to recognize the things that the Holy Spirit is asking you to die to yourself more in today, right? Yeah. And would you take a moment and just really hand those things over even as we speak, right? We have to make sure that we reconcile regularly. Mm our relationship with Jesus, yeah, right? That we take the time to sit down and say, where am I at, right? And make yes. sure, are, have we maybe gone off of the path that we knew that God, that he called us to? And if so, hey, there's something to die to. There's something to die to, right? Yeah. So we're, we can be so thankful that Jesus gives us this lesson, yes. right? Because the other side of it is freedom. Absolutely. And I think it, it, when we're going into that and we're saying, I'm going to die to this, which is really, Cody, you say it all the time, that it's like, Fear and control versus trust and surrender. That's one of the one of the two options we have. And what this is really forcing us to do is to hand over mm. control. And so that can feel very scary, mm. um, especially when we talk about like what like you said, safety, significance, satisfaction. I mean, these things like uh, make up a lot of our identity and who we are in an unhealthy way. And so um, you know that handing over of control is surrender. That's that's the word we use for it. You know, giving it to Jesus. So. I'd love to pray for you um, as we go from here that we could give control over to him. And I, we say it a lot, but I gave my life to Jesus when I was a young woman. And there are many, many days that I have to give him my yeah. life again, that Absolutely. I have to surrender. And and maybe we should be in the rhythm of daily uh, yielding, daily, Lord, I die to myself, uh, whatever it is you want, mm. take it yeah. because you know what's best. Um, and so I'm going to pray that for us. Yes, please and do. I want you to know this might be the first time that you ask Jesus to take control of your life, mm. that you say, take control. And this might be the 50th time. We want to know if it's your first time. So it'll be an option yes. to, to let us know that. We want to know. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can email us, call us, be brave and type it in the chat. Um, yeah. Or it might be the you know 50th time. Yeah. And that's okay too. And I love what Cody said about Man, Jesus gives us the, the option always to get back on track with him. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't run out of grace for us. And so uh, I think today is that reconciling day for a lot of us. Absolutely. So let's pray. Amen. Yeah. God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Mm. We just see ourselves as Peter that just can in one moment be on top of the world and commissioned by you and meeting with you and empowered by you. And the next moment, misusing that and, mm. and trying to control in our fear and our own expectations and understandings of the world around us, Lord, just forgive us. We're so human and we are so in need of a savior. And so, Lord, right now, um, first, we want to praise you for the opportunity that you give us. It's not just about us handing over control, um, while that's that's a huge part of it, but it's also about what we receive mm -hmm. when we do that, God, freedom and healing and breakthrough and direction and clarity and so many other things, God, joy. And even this week, I'm um, just talking with another sister of mine, just relief from anxiety mm -hmm. and yeah. depression, um, God, this is what happens happens when we put our lives in your hands. And so, Father, I pray right now that you would um, just, just help us to yield. Yeah. Just help us, God, whether it's the first time or the 50th time or the millionth time, God, we give control yes. of our lives, our hearts, our minds to you, yes, Jesus. Jesus. And we take hold of the the life that gets to live in the promise that when we lose our life, we actually get to find it. Mm -hmm. Lord, and so we trust you. Yeah. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man, as usual, Matthew, grateful for the gospel writers Absolutely. and how the Holy Spirit has been speaking to us. Yeah. 
All right, everybody, you have a fantastic week. Go be Jesus, okay? Let's go be Jesus together. Amen. All right. in grace and mercy There is nowhere we can hide from your love You are steadfast never failing You are faithful Our creation is in awe of who you are You're the healer of the sick Comfort for every heart that mourns. For our King and our Savior forever. For eternity we sing of all you've done. For eternity we sing of all you've done. We say. against no one can stand between us and God with us God for us nothing can come against no one can stand between us can stand between us heart, it moves with compassion. There is life, there is healing in your love. You're the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And for eternity, we sing of all you've done. Come on.
against No one can stand between us And God with us God for us Nothing can come against And no one can stand between us Can stand between us Stand between